Chapter 10 starts with a section called correlation, and this is going to be an area of inferential statistics that involves determining whether a relationship exists between two variables. So for example, is the number of hours a student spends studying related to the student's exam score? Or it could be medical things like is caffeine related to heart damage? And the purpose of this chapter is to be able to answer these four statistical questions. So the first one is, are two or more variables linear, linearly related? And when we say the phrase related in math, what we mean is a discernible pattern existing between them. Now if they are related, the next thing we want to know is what is the strength of that relationship? So would we classify it as strong, moderate, or maybe weak? Uh, number three is what type of relationship exists. So can we kind of classify it a little bit more specifically? And then ultimately we want to see what kind of predictions can be made from that relationship. Now the two variables in this study are called the independent variable and the dependent variable. Um, the independent variable we know is the letter X. Okay, that's the one that can be controlled or manipulated. So the number of hours that a student spends studying. And then the dependent variable, we usually use a Y for that, and that's the one that cannot be controlled or manipulated. So in other words, the grade that the student earns. Now the first thing that you want to do when you are trying to determine whether or not two variables are related is to go ahead and graph your data because you want to try to get a visual way of seeing what the relationship is. Okay, so that's your first step is to, to graph your data and we do that using what we call a scatter plot. Okay, so that just means to plot all your points. Okay, and then you're just going to visually look at your data and, you know, see if you can kind of just start off there. So we have some examples here on these four graphs of um, some things that you might see when you plot your data values. So the first one is an example of a positive linear relationship. So how do I know it's a linear relationship? Well, you can see that the points are basically like clustered together in what looks like a straight line. And then why is it positive? Well, if you remember from algebra, the slope of a line is positive if um, the points or the line is rising as you move to the right. So a positive linear relationship is where the points or the line rises to the right. And what that means is that as your x value increases, your y value also increases. So as one goes up, the other goes up. Okay, you can likewise have a negative linear relationship. So again, the linear part's kind of obvious, like they're you know clustered around what looks like straight lines. And then it's negative because the slope of that line would be negative. And you know that just visually because the line looks like it's falling to the right. Okay, and a negative linear relationship means that as your x value increases, your y value decreases. So as one goes up, the other goes down. Now these are going to be the two that we're going to focus on studying this chapter, um, linear relationships. But just so you know, there are other relationships that do exist out there. So in example C there, we have a curvilinear relationship. So you can see like the points are kind of clustered around a curve like that. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other examples of different relationships that we're not going to get into, but they do exist. And then D is an example of what a scatter plot might look like if there's no relationship. So you basically just kind of have points all over. Um, they're scattered. So that would tell you that um, there is no correlation between the variables. So example one, we want to construct a scatter plot for the data obtained in a study on the number of absences and the final grades of seven randomly selected students from a certain class. Okay, and we're given all of our data already. So we have our seven students, the number of times they were absent, and then their final grade in the class. So scatter plot, let's go ahead and start to draw that. So I'll do my coordinate plane. I'm going to label my axes. So the x-axis is the number of absences. 
Okay, you can pick your scale. You just want it to be appropriate for your data. So I did by fives. I went from 5, 10, 15. And then your y-axis, you can label that as the final grade. I started at 40 and went up to um, 90. On this stuff, it is okay to truncate your y-axis there, so you don't have to start at zero. Okay, and I went by tens from 40 up to 90. Okay, and then we're just going to plot all of our points. So we are doing this by hand. Just try to be, you know, as accurate as you can. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. Um, so let's see. For student A, they had six absences and a final grade of 82. So that's the ordered pair 682. So you're going to go over six and then estimate where you think 82 is and go up there and make a point. And then we're going to do that for the other six students. So the next one is 286. Okay, and then the third one is 1543. 974. 1258, 590, and last one is 878. Okay, so we have our scatter plot now. Okay, so now you just want to kind of look at that and see, all right, which one of those cases does this look the most like? So hopefully you would agree with me that um, our points kind of do look like they're falling along a straight line. They are kind of clustered, you know, close together. And then that definitely looks like a negative relationship. So if you were to draw a line, you know, kind of through those points, it would be falling as you move to the right. So based off our scatter plot, it looks as if a negative linear relationship exists between the number of student absences and the final grade of the students. Okay, now this was an easy one to do by hand. Okay, we only had seven data points. The numbers were all really reasonable. So that worked out. You know, in the real world, you're going to have really large data sets, maybe not so nice numbers. You definitely don't want to sit there and plot them out by hand. So that's where technology helps us out. So I'm going to show you how to do it in your graphing calculator. That way, on your homework, you don't have to do them by hand. Um, so what you want to do is put the X column, so the number of absences, into L1, and then your final grades, um, or the Ys, into L2. So go to your list, clear out whatever you already have in there, and then put those in L1 and L2. I'll do it as well. And just make sure you don't mix up the order at all, because they are paired together. So we'll do X is in L1, Y is in L2. And then what you want to do is, let me pause this real fast. Um, after that, you want to uh, basically, we're going to plot it on our graphing calculator. So we're going to do a scatter plot. So you want to get the scat or stat plot up here. So that's above the Y equals. So to do that, you're going to hit second Y equals. So second, y equals, okay, that gets you your stat plot. And then by default, these are all turned off. So we want to just turn the first one on. So click enter and then toggle to on and highlight that and change it. Click enter. And then everything else should be okay. So once you have it on on, um, the first one as far as like the types of graphs that you can do on here is the scatter plot. So everyone should have that by default already. Your X list should already be L1, Y list already L2. Pick whatever mark you want. I'm just going to keep it like that. And then we're going to um, graph it. So up here in the top corner, you're going to go to graph. So click that. And then what should come up is your scatter plot. So obviously if your graph looks like mine, that doesn't look too good because it's empty. And that's because the window is not right. So the easiest way to get the, the window on your screen um, to fit your data is to go to Zoom. So Zoom is the, the middle one there. And then you're going to go down to Zoom Stat. So 
so it's number nine there. Okay, and that's just gonna, it's really smart. It's gonna just automatically fit the window. So it's perfect around your data. And that's it, that's your scatter plot there. So if you wanted to do put it on paper, then you could just copy it down. Or for connect, you'll just pick the one that looks like that. And we can actually see, we did pretty well with our hand drawing here. This one looks um, very similar to that one. So you can of course play this again if you missed any of that, but I am going to just put it in words for you in case you like writing this stuff down. So you do stat plot, which you get by hitting second equals. Okay, you click enter, you select on, then you hit graph up in the top corner, and then you go to zoom and go down to zoom stat, and that'll fit your scatter plot nicely in your window.